So welcome to the third of the four-part series of tutorials on working with data types in Python. Uh, this part is going to look at dates and times. So here's what we'll cover during this tutorial. We'll firstly look at how you can get dates and times, whether you want to get today or whether you want to get a specific date or time. And then we'll look at how you can format them using the strf time function. We'll then look at how you can use the calendar module for all sorts of different things. And finally, we'll look at an alternative way to format dates using the calendar module in part. As always, you'll be able to click on the link at the top right, to, which should appear about now, to download any files to do with this tutorial. And if you can't get them there, you can get to them by clicking on the link on this tutorial's page in YouTube. And with that, I think it's time for me to disappear, as has become customary, and hand over to Sven. So let's get started. Let's begin by getting today's date. So what I'll do is create a variable uh, to hold it. I'll call it the day date. And I'll set that equal to the date time module, except if you're going to work with dates and times, you need to remember to import that module. Now, if I go back, you should see that it auto completes to give me the date time today function. And it is a function. If I let my mouse linger over it, you can see it comes, well, it's a method, which amounts to the same thing. So I need to put open and close brackets after that. So what I can now do is print that out to see what it looks like. And if I run that program, you'll see it gives you not just today's day, which is the 2nd of November, as it happens, but it's also 2.28 in the afternoon. You can also do the same thing using the now function. So what I could do if I wanted to is copy and paste these two lines of code and then select them. And what I'll do is press Control H to do a, a replacement. And I'll replace today with now in the currently selected text. So I choose replace all now and run that. You can see that I get now date and today's date being exactly the same thing. So I'm not quite sure whether there's duplication there. Use whichever you prefer. What sort of variables have I just created? Let's find out. So if I now print out the type of my variable called today's date, you can see it is a date time dot date time. So this is a class created in the module date time. It's not a built-in Python class. So that's how you can use today's date and today's time. What happens if you want to get a different date? So what we're going to do now is get a very, very memorable date indeed, which is the time, date and time at which the first plane struck the Twin Towers. Um, so to do this, I can use date time dot date. And then in the brackets, I can specify the year, which was 2001, I hope, the month, which was nine, and the date, which was 11. And then I could print that out. And also, I think what I'll do is print out the type of it. I want to see what sort of a thing I've got. And just to get rid of this other stuff so it doesn't clutter up my printout, I'll press Control forward slash to comment that out. So if I now run that, you can see it gives me that the date at which the plane struck the Twin Towers was the 11th of 9th, 2001, and I've created something which is a date time dot date. If I wanted to be more specific, I could create another variable called memorable time, perhaps, and I could set that to be date time dot date time. And if I do this, I can specify six arguments, which are the year, the month, whoops, the day, the hour. Now I'm probably wrong about this, but I seem to remember it was about 8.45 in the morning, the minutes and the second. And if I print out that, print out the type of it, see I've got a very slightly different thing. When I run that, you can see it's given me the date and the time component too, and it's a slightly different sort of variable. And that is how dates, times, and times works in Python. What we now look at is how to get them to look prettier and how to format them. So having looked at how you can get dates and times, how can you display them nicely? And to do that, we're going to use the strf time function. And to do that, we're going to need what codes to supply to it. It's, I must admit, for this little bit, it's as if they left the Python ease of use uh, principle behind, but see what you think. 
So I'm going to print out uh, the memorable time I've created above. So this is roughly when the first plane struck the Twin Towers. And I want to print it out with the day name, the day number, the month name, and the year number, and then the time. So to do this, I can type in my memorable time, and then I can use the STRF time function, and I can put in arguments to make it work. But as to what I type in there, this is where life gets complicated. Included with the, with the tutorial are two files called dateformatting.png and timeformatting.png. They're images. So let's look at the dates first. I want to get the day name. Well, the day name is over here. It's, it's going to display like that. So to get that, I'm going to have to put a percent capital A in. To get the day number, that's up here. I'll use a percent D. At least D stands for day. And then to get the month name, that's over here. So I'll use percent %B for month. It doesn't make much sense, does it? And to get the year number as a four-digit string, I'll use percent %Y. So I hope you've remembered those. If I now try getting that to work within my quotation marks, <coughs> so I'll type in percent capital A for the day name, percent little d for the day number, percent capital B for the month name, and then percent capital Y for the year number. It's not that easy to remember, is it? If I then try printing that out, it will give me the day nicely formatted. But why couldn't they just use Excel style formatting strings? I'm sorry, I'm moaning. So now what I'll do is print out the time. So to do this, it'll be pretty much exactly the same command. It's just that my formatting will change. So to do times, we want to print out the hour as a two-digit number, up to 12. So that'll be this little fellow. And to do that, I'll use percent capital I. To get the minutes and the seconds, I'll use percent M and percent S. That makes sense. And to get the AM, PM, I'll use percent little P. So again, hopefully we've remembered that. Let's try this out. Within the quotation marks, I can type in percent %i to give the hours, uh, colon percent capital M to give the minutes, colon percent capital S to give the seconds, and then space percent little p to give the am, pm. And if I try running that, you can see it gives me the death time as well. It's such a difficult thing to remember, and I dislike it so much. In a bit, I'm going to show you a different way to do the same thing. What I want to do now is just to give you an idea of some of the things you can do with the calendar module. So I've created a file called calendar module and I've got my usual date in there. I've given it a shorter variable name so that I can refer to it easily. So the first thing you can do with the calendar is you can print it out. So to do this, I'm going to print out uh, calendar.month. And unfortunately, I haven't actually imported my calendar module, which is why that wasn't auto-completing. And then after the month, I can put in the year. I'm going to go for this year. I'm going to go for the current month at the time of speaking, which is November. And then the third argument I can put in is how many characters are assigned to each column. So I'm going to go for four characters because it gives reasonably good results. You'll see exactly what I mean by this in a second. If I now run that, you can see I get the uh, month I've chosen and I've got four characters for each column, which gives enough room to show the day name as a three character string. So that's one use of it. Another use of the calendar module is for getting uh, abbreviations of days and months. So I'm going to now just print out uh, the day name. So to do this, I can print out the calendar. I'm going to use one of the following abbreviations. So there's a file called calendarcodes.png, which gives you some standard calendar codes that you can use. So the day abbreviation would give you the three characters for the day. Day name would give you the full day name. And month abbreviation and month name work in a similar way for months. So I want to take uh, the day, uh, let's go for the full day name. And what I'll do is show it for the second day, whatever um, Python deems that to be. And if I run that, you'll see the second day is actually deemed to be Wednesday. Now, since this almost certainly starts from zero, it implies days by default start from a Monday. 
but I don't want two in there. I want the actual weekday number for my memorable date. So I can type md.weekday. And then I need to remember that this is a function. So I need to put open and close brackets. So there's quite a few brackets there following each other to get right. If I now run that, you can see it will give me Tuesday, which was the day of the week on which 9-11 happened. And I could do a similar thing to print off the month name. Pasted that. Uh, this time I'm going to use the uh, month. Let's just get rid of that. I'm going to use the month name function or the month name uh, array, I think I should say, or list. And I'll use md.month to get the month number. And if I run that, you can see it gives me an error message. And the reason for that is I think this is actually not a function. It isn't. So it gives me September. Why the weekday is a function and the month is a property, I couldn't actually tell you. So that's some of the uses of the calendar module. What we're now going to do is have a look at how you can combine this to format date strings. Whether this is for you will be a very personal thing. So I promised earlier that we would have a look at a different way to format dates. It's possibly just as long-winded as the one using strf time, but judge for yourself. I think it's easier to understand though, and also easier to remember to write. So what we're going to do is take a memorable date, it's our usual one, and present it in the same way as we did earlier. So the first thing I need to do is I need to import my calendar module, and then I'm going to create a variable called mdformatted to hold my formatted date. And I'll set it equal to, here goes. So the first thing I want is I want the day number. Then I want the day name. And I want the month name. And then I'll have a comma and the year number. And then I can use my format function to fill in the gaps. So the first thing I wanted was the day name. To get that, I can use calendar dot and then I can use the day name. I can put a square bracket in to pick out the particular one I want. And the one I want is md.weekday. And weekday is a function, so I need to put open and close brackets after it. And then I can put a co comma and go on to my next thing. The next thing is the day number. So I don't need to go to the calendar module to do that. I can just put md.weekday. Uh, I think I could probably do with sticking colon 02 to make sure I get it as a two-digit number. The third thing I want is a month one, month name. So I can put calendar dot month name. And in square brackets, I can put md dot month. Remember, month is a property, not a function. So I don't need the open close brackets. And finally, I can put the year in, which is just md.year, which will display as a four-digit number. So now to print that out. To do that, I can just use a print function. And I'll print it out. So will it work? Not if I don't type it in. Um, let's try it out. And remarkably, it's worked first time. I'm just going to see now, if I change this to one, what would happen? And I get the day as a two-digit number. So there's obvious scope here for creating that in a separate function, but I'll leave that as an exercise to you, the reader.